Hi there, this is Sarah. This video is going to take a look at the core definitions of religion. So when you start to study beliefs, um, you could get an exam question on the definitions of religion. Um, but this information could also be relevant when you're answering other questions. And it's a really good foundation um, for you to build your, your studies on the sociology of religion onto. So it's really important to have a good understanding of this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is um, there are three, there's two, two core, but there really are three, um, Exp types of explanations of religion, so type ways of defining religion. We've got functional explanations and substantive explanations. Okay, so I've just created a bit of a, a sort of mind map here that might be helpful, and I'll show you the overview at the end of the video. Um, so we've got these functional and substantive explanations of religion, and what they do. Um, is they explain religion in different ways. So the functional, it explains kind of the purpose of religion and what the religion seeks to achieve or what it provides within society. Um, and that's criticised sometimes for actually being a little bit too broad and it can kind of encompass any group that believe in something. So that kind of makes it a little bit limiting. Um, and, and substantive really explains it's the substance what what does the religion actually consist of so if i show you two examples this will probably put this into more perspective and um, the other one is the interpretivist so this is the idea that um religion it changes with society and that it it's, it starts to move towards that idea of a plurality of truth so this is a lot more uh, kind of postmodern um interpretive you know based on different meanings and different understandings um by different groups okay so but we're just going to focus on functional and substantive for a moment so if we look at um what milton yinger said so this is a very functional definition of religion milton yinger said that religion is a system of beliefs or practices, so beliefs and practices, by means of which a group of people struggle with the problems of humanity. So this is, so Yinga was basically saying, and this was in 1995, so not that long ago, um, in the grand scheme of things. So what Milton Yinga was saying was that really religion provides us with this kind of function of helping us struggle through these inevitable problems of human life. So that's, it kind of gives us a functional explanation, you know, what does religion provide for us? However, if we look at um, Robertson, and this is older, this is from 1970, but what this is still very useful, what Robertson said is more of a substantive explanation of religion. And Robertson said, this is the, religion is the existence of supernatural beings that have a governing effect on life. So, um, this could be quite limiting, the existence of supernatural beings. Now, Buddhism doesn't have an existence of, of a supernatural being, so it would exclude some religions that we know definitely are uh, religions, you know, across the world. Um, but it gives you an idea of that substantive explanation is kind of giving key things or key aspects of religion um, that are there. So actually, if we combine the two we start to end up with a better understanding of what religion is and the other thing that Durkheim provides for us is the sacred and the profane so what Durkheim says is religion is a way of setting apart certain activities within society certain things that we do so the profane is kind of our everyday we go to work we pay bills we hang out with our friends you know um, that's that's profane but sacred are these things that we do because of our religious beliefs and that might be rituals it might be ceremonies it might be the way we live our life it might be the sort of food that we choose to eat um, and it may also be you know collective worship and and that kind of thing it might be the kind of schools we choose to go to it may be even whereabouts we choose to live really um, but sacred being the way we live our life um, because of our religion so if you choose to wear a hijab that would be a sacred um, part of your life whereas what we choose to wear on a daily basis generally would be more profane um, more practical more everyday um, a sacred choice might be whether to eat meat or not. It might be the type of meat that you're willing to eat, certain things that you don't eat, the way perhaps your food has to be prepared or slaughtered. Um, other sacred ways that you live your life might be that every Sunday you go to church. 
it might be that every Friday um, you visit a mosque, it may be that you don't eat meat on a Friday, um, it may be that you have, uh, you've you've chosen to send your children to a particular religious school um, so that they'll have certain teachings. So sacred is anything we do in our daily lives that is related to our religion, whereas profane are all the other things. So Durkheim's argument is that really sacred, it's the way we define religion, is that those sacred things are what set apart our religion from everything else that we do in society, even though those things are happening simultaneously. Okay, so let's just give you an overview there, Let's see if we can. So you've got a functional definition, a substantive definition. We've touched on interpretivists. I think that should really be another video in itself. I've talked about the difference between sacred and profane, according to Durkheim. And there's some useful um, introductory definitions there. If you um, want to do a bit more reading on the definitions of religion, the wonderful Revised Sociology website has got um, a brilliant mind map. So there's a page called um, What is Religion? And that's on revisedsociology.com. And they're absolutely fantastic. It's a really, really recommended website to use when you're kind of reading around these areas and building your understanding. Some fantastic materials um, you can get through them. And uh, if you go, you go to the mind map and that will really give you a little bit more information on what we've looked at here and it goes into a bit more detail on the criticisms as well. So I would really recommend that. Um, and that's it for the uh, definitions of religion from me. Take care.